It's so beautiful. Excuse the Crocs if you can see them. If you don't like them. Oh, even the ring is nice. Yeah, oh, there she is. <laughs> she sleeps with her eyes open. Sad face, but you can't see. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Last night was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> Nala I still was... feel like it's the evening from yesterday. Let's just say Nala was ill a lot of last night. <laughs> from one end. Let's get your ear. I know. I have to. It's I like... have to wrap this around my ear twice. <laughs> Nala was not feeling great, so Alfie and I were tag teaming through the night taking it in turns although you did do two in a row because i was like i'm so i've been waking up at 5 30 every morning and last night me and alfie were like oh my god we're going to bed at 12. i was like i reckon i'm gonna sleep past 5 30. i'm gonna do it you said and i was like i really hope so i think tonight is the night i think it is and then lo and behold nala wakes up like every hour and a half through the night we're back at the vets uh she's got to get her boot taken off this morning and hopefully they'll give her something for her tummy um because yeah she's just a little unsettled um but it is what it is we're doggy parents that's just what you have to do and i'm just <laughs> just thinking about how hard it's going to be to be parents oh i know like and that's like this. nothing. Like how long does this go on for when you're a parent? I suppose it's different for different children. I don't know. Well, like six months? Maybe more? Literally no idea. Is this her coming back? Because that would be awkward. <laughs> We're sat in the vet car park and they've just taken Nala in. I can't tell. When your dog needs the toilet, and I'm not talking like, oh, I need to go out. I'm talking like needs the toilet. And you have to get downstairs, put on a harness, put on a lead, put on her little plastic boot. It's oh, yeah. like, it's literally a race against time. Throw a coat on, throw your Crocs on, get outside in the pitch black. It was quite funny, it was quite uh So yeah, that's what we're doing this morning. I've already edited my video though, so that's one plus of being up early, because I've actually got quite a lot to do today. No, you've um, already been awake for four hours. Yeah, I've already been awake. I'm actually feeling okay. Alfie just said to me, are you not like, do you not just feel on a scale of one to 10 really tired? And actually right now I'm feeling okay. I'm feeling like, no, I'm awake, I'm ready for the day. But I do think at like one o'clock I'll start getting quite tired. Um, and I don't drink coffee, so you can coffee up. I'm gonna have to go for a coffee now. I feel like, so it's the only way to describe it, is that I was having a really nice sleep and then to wake me up this morning, someone just hit me on the head with a frying pan. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh my God, okay. That's what I feel like right now. Oh God. Also, the reason we've got our masks on is obviously because um, the when the vet brings Nala back out, you have to wear masks and you have to stay in the car park. This is the new protocol. Ooh. We're gonna go for a coffee after this. Hopefully the boot comes off. We're gonna see what her leg looks like without, like, I wonder what it looks I like. I hope the scar's only small. My ears. <laughs> I was thinking that yesterday, you know. I looked in the mirror and I was like, this, this face mask, I wear the same brand of face masks. I got them from these vending machines and I've got white and black. I've got multiple of each, but they pull my ears a bit forward. Do you see? Yeah. And I, I wonder thinking, if every, my ears hurt when I wear the mask. I was thinking like, if I wear it like this for, I don't know, it's nearly been, it's come in three months or whatever, it'll be a year. So I'm like, if my ears have been every time I go out pulled forward for a year, do you think when I take it off, eventually- They'll just stay forward. They're gonna be, like legit. I mean, look at mine. Mine can't stay like this. Yeah, but imagine if, it, if you, if, like, if we have to wear face masks for another two years. Yeah, true. Your ears would no, well, probably no. be reshaped. Do you know a what? Bit. I would probably invest in having some made perfectly to fit my face. I mean, it's already been eight months. Yeah, well, I didn't think I'd be wearing it this long. I'm not going to lie. Maybe we should see if we could get some, like. Maybe Yours we could just fits make, perfectly. Maybe we could just make, make some of these bits ourselves. We could just extend it. Yeah, some of them you can adjust with elastic, mm. but obviously this one was just way too big for my face, so I have to like double cross it over. Mm. <sighs> wakey wakey! Oh, you're about to swallow yours. <laughs> Vets is done. Nala's in the back. Hi, baby. She has a new bandage on now. 
for some reason I thought the vet said they were going to remove the bandage which they did but then I didn't realize they were going to put a new one on but that does make more sense because her leg's not going to be healed yet so I think it was more a case of removing one bandage and take that dressing off and put a new bandage and dressing on so that's what she's had done we've been sent away with a crap ton of medication so we'll have to make sure we're staying on top of that and some syringes as you do so we're gonna have to get home and sort out what she's got to take and then give her a tiny bit of breakfast we've got to feed her little and often so today's meant to be quite a busy day for me but I don't know much I'm actually gonna get done when I need to be <laughs> topping Nala up with a ton of medication and feeding her four times a day and we still have to use the plastic boot for outside so it's all good though we love you you and your squitty bum Alfie's now grabbing some coffees I've actually gone for a chai latte so that's not coffee but that's a tea um and I'm excited about it chai latte with almond milk and he's just texted me a picture of the food and they had a cinnamon bun with white chocolate ganache and that sounded delicious so i've also gone for one of those hello what a day this is turning out to be i just feel like there's not enough hours in the day and today is one of those days where there is not enough hours in the day i've just had a really exciting package so i thought i would also side note oh my god well that doesn't dry i was gonna say side note alfie bought this like roller thing um that like covers your address but uh i put that on there literally just now and it hasn't dried and it's gone all over my cream jumper so i don't know that i would recommend that <laughs> i have had a function of beauty delivery as you guys know i work with function of beauty and oh very nearly just cut myself be very careful with scissors guys always use with adult supervision <laughs> The last time I spoke to you about Function of Beauty, I had done a collaboration with them. It was the um, Zoella X Function of Beauty collaboration. And we had the limited edition stickers and the scrunchies that I basically just live in. And so many of you um, ordered it. Oh my goodness, this is such a mess. Right, I'm going to put this on the ground. I should not have used that roller on that label. It's all over my hand. You'll have to excuse that. So many of you ordered it and loved it and it was amazing to see you all tagging me on your stories when you were receiving your Function of Beauty boxes. So yeah, just thank you for the support on that and I'm so pleased you love it as much as I do. If you're hearing me talk about Function of Beauty for the first time, I am aware that a lot of you may have heard me talking about this already so I will keep it brief. But they are a a um, hair care brand. Um, they actually do other things too, which I will mention in a minute, but they are fully customizable hair care brands. So you can choose things like your hair goals, the things that you want to achieve, the type of hair you have. You literally fill out a survey online. I just feel that my hair is in such good condition. I feel that it's really healthy considering I put um, bleach on my hair. I, yeah, I love it. Today, as I said, something super exciting. They have a new limited edition fragrance and I am going to smell this with you now for the first time. This fragrance is for the holiday season. It's called Isn't She Bubbly and it's a sparkling champagne and citrus fragrance. I've somehow managed to get this on my finger. I can already smell it. It smells incredible. Oh, that is so fresh and so zingy but also so festive. So this has notes of sparkling champagne and sweet orange peel and grapefruit oil. It smells incredible. It smells, it re really reminds me of something, but I have no idea what that reminds me of. I love that. I can't wait to use that. That's gonna smell incredible. As I said, that fragrance is for a limited time only, but it's available in the shampoo, the conditioner, the masks, the leave-in treatment, the serum, the body lotion, and the shower gel. And as I said, I was gonna mention these because uh, they also allow you to fully customize a shower gel and a body lotion. So when I remember to use body lotion, this is actually the one that lives on my bedside table. I use it on my hands, my arms, my legs, um, as you know, I'm not the best at moisturising, but something with a pump just makes life so much easier and you can select the type of skin you have and how much moisture you want, so love that. 
as I always mention, Function of Beauty have no sulfates, no parabens, no toxins, no GMOs, and they are 100% cruelty free and vegan. And I've literally been using this for almost two years. I wouldn't change it. I love it, my hair loves it. If you would like to check it out or you wanna check out the limited edition um, fragrance, then check my link below. You can go on over and you can get 20% off. Oh my gosh, I've just realized they also have these new festive stickers. These are so cute. And as always, got my name on the bottle. Alfie also uses Function of Beauty, so the fact that this has my name on now is actually very handy so that he does not use mine anymore. <laughs> I'm now just gonna sit and moisturize because after I said that, I was very aware of the fact that my skin felt so dry and I was like, when was the last time I moisturized? Let's be honest. I'm actually really glad I put some makeup on because I was feeling, I'd reached that point, the point that I said earlier where I was like, I think I'm gonna struggle. Uh, past one o'clock. Well, it's two o'clock now and I could shut my eyes and fall asleep But actually putting a bit of makeup on getting freshened up having a shower has made me feel so much better Also just realized the radiator I'm sat in front of I came in here because this is like the only room with Half decent natural light in it Everywhere in the house today is so dark It's one of those days. I really wanted to go out for a walk as well and I, now I'm just a bit like mm, Don't know about that and Nala can't go on a walk because of her leg at one point i was going on so many walks and walks were like my my thing that was my like wind down i put a podcast on put the lead and harness on nala and out we would go and especially through the second lockdown and just before that actually i was trying to get out and do a walk every day and i really really loved it i absolutely love getting outside discovering new places to go finding new areas around where we live and obviously nala loved going outside as well and then with nala's leg we cut we weren't to let her um we didn't want the lump to get swollen so we were told not to really take her anywhere or let her do anything that would mean it could swell up before the surgery and now obviously she needs to recover so no doggy walks at least but that is no excuse, I should still go outside, even without the dog, but it's just not a very nice day. <laughs> Tonight, I am gonna do a little Instagram live with Amy on um, my Instagram, and we're gonna do a little magpie Q&A, which I'm really excited about. I feel like Amy and I haven't spoken in so long. When we were writing the book together, we would speak back and forth so much, obviously, <laughs> um, and now obviously the book is out and in the world, um, although we have done a little prep for book two, which will be starting officially in January, we've kind of started, we'd already started with the plot um, two years ago, uh, but fleshing out, I really hate that word, but it's the only word I can really think of. Um, and we'll begin writing the book in January. So this little bit of time, like, after publication and Christmas and New Year is kind of like talking about the book and getting to read all your reviews and having it out in the world. But it means that Amy and I don't really need to speak to each other as much, which is quite weird. So I'm excited to see her. I'm excited to catch up. And we just thought it'd be really nice to jump on Instagram and allow some of you to ask us some questions and for us to answer them. And I mean, what else? is anyone doing on a Thursday evening these days anyway. So I actually do wanna try and do a few more lives. I think at the moment I'm where I'm trying to juggle doing this and being on Insta stories even, I'm finding it quite hard. I'm really bad at doing both. And I've said this for years, when I put 100% into one, everything else sort of falls away a bit. But um, I do love an Instagram live. I love watching them too. Especially when you're doing something like putting your makeup on or getting ready for the day or just like winding down. It's just something nice. I've literally just bought, um, basically one of my favorite podcast series, which I've talked about a few times, is called Joan and Jerrica. I think it's called Dear Joan and Jerrica. Definitely not one for the faint hearted. It's quite dark humor. I feel like if you know Julia Davis as a comedian, you know her humor is quite dark anyway. So I think immediately you'll know if it's for you or not. And I know people who don't find it funny at all, <laughs> but, um, it's just great. Mark and I 
love watching um, all of her TV series. We're obsessed basically and a new series of the podcast came out recently. I think there's four episodes now and I've obviously listened to all of them. But the most recent one was actually filmed. So they were dressed in their characters and they were being interviewed on a stage. Obviously it's like socially distanced and there wasn't a live audience but you were able to purchase a viewing of it. So I did that today and I'm really excited to sit down later and watch it. I started watching a couple of minutes of it downstairs just to check that it worked. Um, and I thought, no, I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna wait until the day is done and then I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna really thoroughly enjoy it. But it looks great. I've sent Mark the link as well and he's all over it. If you want something really funny, a little bit dark, a little bit crude, um, then definitely check out Dear Joan and Jerrica on a uh, podcast, um, wherever you listen to your podcasts because it is great. Nice little distraction that will no doubt make you smile or laugh. Um, but yeah, love that. So that's that's my little half two in the day update. I said the other day that I wanted to pop the wreath up on the door and I still haven't done it. And it's now the 10th of December and that's just not acceptable. So I'm gonna do the wreath now. I'm gonna show you it first because I Love it. Right, let me put you down here. Also, can we take a minute? I'm not wearing loungewear today. I actually got dressed, but these um, trousers are too small for me and uh, they ju just keep popping open. So apologies for that. So this wreath, I saw on Instagram. I, you know what Instagram is like with me and targeting me with ads that I just end up buying everything. I don't know whether this was an ad or if I saw somebody else mention it or it came up somewhere. I, I genuinely don't remember. I feel like this was an ad and I bought this um, through the ad. But this wreath is by a lovely lady called Sean Ryan Design. And Sean is a small business and she makes these wreaths. And I just thought I'd really love to support a small business this year with my wreath purchasing. And so this is the wreath. It has ornaments on it, like actual glass. Um, is it macrame? Baubles on it. So once this has had its time, I do feel like it will survive quite well. But once it's had its time, I can take the decorations off and I can pop these on the tree. Um, it's got literally... God, as I'm holding it, I'm pulling bits off. It's got like everything in it. It's so beautiful and she's handmade this. And so I will leave a link down below. Um, there's the, the hanger there. And I'm just gonna go and pop this. I'm gonna sneeze. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go and pop this on the door. But how beautiful is that? I'll show you more outside because I'll be able to get up close with the detail, but. I love it. How sad does my porch look without all the pumpkins and hay bales? One of these years, I am gonna put together a festive porch. I just don't know what I would do because I feel like going out and purchasing loads of Christmas trees just seems quite extravagant. <laughs> Not that buying like <laughs> 35 pumpkins isn't, but pumpkins just feel smaller than actual trees. Um, so I don't know. I love the idea of putting a little bench out here, like make it like a little seating area or something, but work in progress. Maybe maybe this time next year, maybe I'll do a smaller autumn porch and a bigger Christmas one. For now, we have a lot of Alfie's boxes for something, which don't, don't look so cute. And a very plain looking door, which is about to get a little Christmas glow up. Excuse the crocs if you can see them. <laughs> Lovely. Look at that. It's literally got everything Christmassy you could ever think of. Right, I just had a delivery of my neon ribbons. So these are the pink, these are the yellow, and 
the green and they didn't have any orange in stock but I do still have some of the orange ribbon that I used a little bit of yesterday so I am gonna get wrapping some of these because I'm really excited for them to look more spectacular what color should we do for your mum and dad and what color should we do for Poppy and Sean whoa they're cool aren't they they are vibrant not what I thought Zoe Sun could be buying what do you mean? They're like... It's not very rustic, I suppose. They're like neon disco, like, you know, like that shop that yeah, you see in Brighton that's like look... Cyberdog or something. I thought they looked so sick with the plain, like, quite plain wrapping. You don't like them? I think they're probably the least festive thing I've ever seen. It looks like ne <laughs> it looks like Nala's bandage. <laughs> Just trust me. Oh, I trust you, you know you're far better at decorating than me. <laughs> so which colour should we do for Poppy and Sean and which one for your mum and dad? Done that for a bit. I have yet to try this cinnamon roll with white chocolate ganache so i'm just gonna sit and eat this oh it's got little red currants on the top i'm gonna take them off <laughs> okay hi there i had an appointment yesterday with i've been thinking about this uh decoration this ribbon i don't know if i like it Alf. You don't like it? I don't know. Now you've said it, I'm like, I don't think it goes with the tree. I don't think it goes. I tried to say it's not the most festive. But I, I was just trying to do something a bit different, a bit fun. Yeah. But it, I, can... I think that it looks like birthday presents. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Oh no. Is it that, is it that important? When all it, it's going to be is ripped open and then it's a nice ribbon to keep. Are you saying I should take the ribbon off? I'm not saying anything. Because there is not a right answer I could possibly say right now. I really like the ribbon. I like the ribbon with the paper. But looking at it under the tree, I'm like... Oh, I, I just don't know. What do you think, guys? Should I stick with this theme I'm going with? Or should I just take the ribbon off and just admit that it doesn't really look very festive and that it looks more like birthday presents? I had a vision and I think I've, I think the vision is there. I just don't know if that vision matches the Christmas tree and the rest of the Christmas in this house vision. I also really liked the idea that I could easily be like, okay, that's an Amanda and Nick present. That's a Poppy and Sean present because of the colour of the ribbon. I liked that, but I don't know. Now you've said it, I can't get it out of my head. When I look at it, I'm like, I just don't think, I just don't think that looks good. It's just a bit cyber dog, that shop. It used to be in Brighton in the lanes, do you remember? <laughs> that's the theme I was going for. Cyber dog Xmas. I don't know. Maybe when there's loads under there, it won't look so bad. Maybe when there's everyone else's presence, you won't really see it. <laughs> you won't really see the neon when everyone else's presence is there. I feel like I'm getting a tan sitting over here right now. I really like the ribbons though. They're really cool. Damn it. I don't no, know. I think Okay, well we've got time. Yeah, let's just, just let's just live with it and, and keep, see yeah, how we seeing, feel about it. <laughs> I'm doing my live with Amy in half an hour. I'm not gonna lie, I could properly just go to bed right now. I'm so tired. But I'm excited to do it. It'll be really fun. So I just need to set up this ring light so that I've got better lighting. And um get answering some questions. Okay, actually, oh, even the ring is nice. Yeah, this was 30, Boy. this was 35 pounds. 
bargain. Alfie basically laughed at me when I bought this. To be fair, I thought it was going to be a big one. <laughs> I didn't laugh at the Look. ring light. I laughed because you thought it was going to be like this, and it's actually like this. Bloody hell. And then you can go down. Let's pull up your camera. Oi. Oi. Okay. And then look, you can change it to like that or blue. Blue light, warm That's light, nice. white light, and then you can go up and down. Okay, that's sick. That is bloody, that is £35 well spent. Happy with that. I'm about to go live. All good, Alf? Yeah. All good over there? I, I get so nervous doing live stuff. I don't know why. Really? Yeah, it's just my own Instagram, but I don't know. How do I go live? Swipe along the story. Yeah. Then you can swipe the light instead of like. No, I can't. I don't know where it is. Quick. <laughs> Come and help me. And then the bottom is the fourth one along. Oh. Do you see? Why don't I have it? Oh, live. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to tune in and just put comments in for, from over here. I'm live. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> yeah. I'm... Did anyone hear Alfie then? <laughs> I'm going to tune in and just write comments from over here. <laughs> Hi everyone, happy Thursday. Hope you're all having a great day. Hi Alex! We'll just wait for a few people to join. I just thought it would be nice for me and Amy to come on and chat about Magpie because we've not done that here on Instagram together. And also I haven't spoken to Amy in so long. Oh, thanks Al. <laughs> hi everyone, hi, hi, hi. Oh, your baby just said hi. Hi Nora. Right, oh there she is. <laughs> <laughs> that worked. It said Amy text you and I was like, I, if I click that, what happens to this live? <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing really well, thank you. Look at you with magpie behind you. Wait. I like to represent. <laughs> First question is from Anne and she said, How did you come up with the concept for this book? Ah. So this was an interesting one because we we kind of knew what kind of book, but like we kind of decided we wanted to write a mystery, didn't we? we yes. First of all, very was, early on, like literally like on. two years into our friendship. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, no. And it was sort of like once, uh, like once we knew that we wanted to kind of write that sort of young adult mystery, then it was like a matter of like picking out what really interested us. I guess wasn't it? We're, like we were, we both loved the kind of atmosphere and things of of a. Of Pretty Little Liars, we talk about that quite a lot, haven't we? Yeah. Um, and you like Broad Church and, and lots, of, lots of other shows like that. Um, and then it was like, we wanted to really like root it in British superstitions and traditions and things that like, you know, made stand out from some of the American uh, young adult stuff that's out there. And I think that we we're trying to think about like different weird British things. Like yeah. Magpie thing, like saluting a magpie when you go by and then, and then the poem and then that all together for us didn't it? yeah 100% it was kind of like an amalgamation of all the things we loved to watch we loved to read we loved to like listen to all rolled into one pretty much yeah. one of the one of the other most asked questions was who wrote who oh yeah <laughs> which we actually said in our first video that we made about it but for a lot of people they actually don't know so I wrote Ivy and Amy wrote Audrey but we're still writing each other's characters and we're still very much um you know as into each character as the other because obviously yeah. there's scenes where i'm writing ivy but audrey features really heavily or has a lot of dialogue so i have to make sure when i'm writing audrey it's like in the same vein that when amy is writing audrey's chapters it makes yeah. total sense which yeah we managed to do i think really well considering like we couldn't meet in person and i think that comes from like because it's been so long in like gestation like since we thought about it for so long and it, like these characters have been building for a lot longer than we actually sat down and started the actual writing like all of that we've done so much work kind of behind the scenes on developing those characters together like and then when we sat down to actually write them separately it was it flowed a lot more naturally yeah we've already done it's so true. I feel like we knew them before we wrote them. Yeah, definitely. Which definitely. I think helped enormously when we were faced with 
lockdown yeah. and having to and also Amy and I we were at like a very pivotal point of the writing process where yeah. we were going to meet and that's another of the questions actually is how did you guys find writing in a pandemic <laughs> yeah. um and I think that part of it we handled really well considering that was when we would have most benefited from being together which is going through the edits going yeah. through all the proofs like yeah, really we, going over everything with a fine tooth comb and actually we changed like a fair amount in those last few like months oh definitely it is surprising how much how much you edit a book like you think it's you know one draft and then you're finished but actually once you get uh, like we have a great editor at Penguin, uh, Emma, who would read and give us comments, and then after that we have to kind of sit down and really make sure the book flows as a whole, but also means that like anything, you know, we, we sort of like, some of the key reveals that happen towards the end of the book, we really worked hard to make sure it all made sense, and also it was all setting up for the second book, and that requires a lot of like layering and careful yeah. consideration, so, and uh, so we had to do that basically all through whatsapp <laughs> facetimes yeah. how do you go about planning yeah. to write a book and i think for a lot of people especially this year where they felt like they wanted to put their creativity into something or they've had more time or they've wanted a new kind of distraction and thought i've always wanted to write a book so how do you even go about like planning that out and i think for us and a genre like this is kind of vital because if you want to start planting seeds and you Definitely. want to start you know layering in like the easter eggs and making sure everything makes total sense with your like bigger vision it did mean that amy and i literally spent like two years yeah. getting everything in a place where when it actually came down to writing it felt like the easiest part of the process because we'd That's already right. done so much work when you um, especially if you already know that you that you want to write a novel in college, like that's really uh, like early on. If you have that goal and you have that dream, I think the the only thing I would say is that um, that it just takes persistence because even the even though the first novel that I wrote um, while I was at university got published, that wasn't the first one I'd ever written. Like I have two no whole novels I like discarded, didn't even try to get published. Like, because I think one of the, the like the biggest things I'd have to say is that just finishing a novel, like getting a start, a middle, and an end down on the page, is such a big accomplishment. Like it's huge. Mm -hmm. It's so much work to do that. And if you are already that far, trust me, you're way ahead of so many people out there. And the second thing I would say is that try and find a group, whether that's maybe that's not in person at the moment, but um, one of the things that really helped me, even. Even though I went to university now 15, 16 years ago and the internet was like <laughs> not as big as it is now, but finding a, like a writing community online actually really helped me. Like, because part of writing, which people don't necessarily think about, but is other people reading it. Like, eventually you have to let it go and you have to share what you've written. And that's learning how to do that, which is really tough. <laughs> I find that really hard. It is really hard. Like, you think the writing is hard part, actually, but actually it's like letting other people read it is really hard and getting that feedback and like because you're making yourself so vulnerable and you you know it's like a really personal thing that you're suddenly sharing with the world but you kind of have to if you want to be a, pub a novelist whether that's published or whether you want to publish yourself or whatever you want to do if you want to be a writer that people read then you have to get used to to sharing your stuff so find that kind of community of hopefully like nice people who will you know give you critique but in a nice way and like and encourage you like that was the biggest help for me because it's it's an isolating profession like you're often like on your own also has been amazing but uh, most of the time you're on your own it's me i'm on the sofa again <laughs> oh my goodness i am just i'm done for the day <laughs> i have something on the tv about christmas markets and it's making me wish that I was in Bruges more than ever, buying something sweet and edible and delicious from a market stall. And that's not what's happening. But, look at this dog. This is the most asleep she's been all day. The little leg. Oh, I just have a feeling that this could be another night of taking her out every couple of hours to the toilet so i think i'm going to end this here 
and uh, I feel like today's been one of those very kind of adult admin-y life days. <laughs> she sleeps with her eyes open. That scares me. I don't like that. 